Welcome to today's webinar. My name is John Megling. Today we're going to be talking about Azure Nested Virtualization. As you can see, basically nested virtualization is nesting one hypervisor within another hypervisor with GIFs, VMs nested within those hypervisors. Again, um, pretty cool thing that's been available to Server 2016, now brought to Azure. These are some sample scenarios that we just put up here just to give you some ideas of things that might be used for. Great for labs, training, pre-staging, uh, Hyper-V containers, those types of things. So we're very excited about this. The other thing to remember is it only supports certain VMs are supported for nested virtualization. The D uh, version 3 series, the E version 3 series, the M series, and it's available in the East, East US, West Europe, and Southeast Asia Pacific, and more regions to come. So now let's take a look at a demo of this new technology. So the first thing we're going to need to do is go to the Azure portal. So let's go ahead and get started, portal.azure.com, and we'll log in with our tenant credentials. And once we're in the portal, it should look pretty familiar to you. You'll start seeing the Azure dashboard. And we're going to go to our virtual machines. And we're going to add a new virtual machine to get started with our nested virtualization project here. So if you're familiar, this is to be very simple. You Out of the gallery, you're going to choose Windows Server. And for nested virtualization, we're going to need server 2016. And we're going to go ahead and create that. Again, if you've created virtual machines, uh, nothing new so far. We're going to give that a name. I recommend the SSD um, disk type for virtual machines, especially nested virtualization. Again, throw in our credentials. can get it right <laughs> always forget my username but anyways we get our credentials in there so we can connect to the virtual machine at this point you can create a um, a new resource group if you don't have one in my case I've already got one that I want to throw this into so I'm going to um, use an existing resource group in my case I'm putting this in the East US If you already have licensing, you're good. If not, you know, we're going to be charged for this, but go ahead and put, hit OK. And this is where it gets important, especially for nested virtualization. Remember, um, we're going to need to use a, an E series V3 or a D series um, V3 version 3 machine. And um, in my case, we're going to go ahead and hit the view all option, and I'm going to pick this. Uh, to uh, CPU 16 gig machine that I've selected here. Definitely going to use managed disk. Don't have to, but uh, it's definitely recommended. Um, you can just verify my settings here. Just like to look it over and then I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And we'll get a summary screen and notice, uh, pay attention that our, our uh, validation has passed. Here's our summary screen. Rolls up our charges, gives us a, an overview of what we've chosen. We're going to go ahead and hit purchase on that. And that will start the deployment of our, um, our virtual machine into our uh, Azure tenant. Once it's created, we're going to take a look at the virtual machine just to verify our settings or what we think they are. And then we want to add a couple disks. I'm going to do this um, with nested virtual machines due to performance. I recommend uh, that you use um, Windows 2 for 2016 storage spaces. I'm going to create a couple disks and um, stripe those.
we've done this before. If not, you just hit that menu and hit Create Disk. Give it a name like everything that we do in Azure. We could create a new resource group or we could use uh, one we already have, which is uh, what I'm going to pick here. Just showing you some of the options here. I really don't need to change much. going to validate that and then create that drive for us. And then we just need to do the same thing for the second drive. Again, just giving it a name, validating the settings. So you can see here, I do have some choices, but we're going to use the premium SSD drives. Again, we're going to create that, let it validate, and then we definitely want to hit save up here. If not, we lose our changes. It's going to update our settings. And voila, we have two, um, we have our OS drive and two extra drives that we're going to use uh, to store these virtual machines upon. Go back to the overview, and then we're going to go ahead and connect to that machine. I'm going to make sure we get our account right that we chose when we created the virtual machine. Again, pretty standard stuff here. Uh, hopefully this is something you've done. Sorry about that. Um, then we're going to launch our virtual machine in Azure which we're going to turn into a hyper host. Let's take a look again at our settings to make sure everything's looking the way we want it. And then we're going to go ahead and take care of these drives that we added. We're going to create a storage pool. Again just showing you there's our drives. And again we're going to create this new storage pool. Start by giving the pool a name. This may be something we've already done. If so, you may want to skip through this. But if you haven't, again, this is maybe new to you. We're going to pick our two drives for our storage pool that we we added in the uh, the Azure portal, and we're going to go ahead and create that. Happens pretty quick. We go ahead and close it out of there. And we can see our pool and the amount of space we have um, in the pool. Thing to remember, Azure is only going to use what we store. So, you know, go ahead and create a big drive and use it the way you want. And then we're going to create a new virtual disk against this pool. We can see our pool. And we're going to give the virtual disk a name. What this is going to do is, is allow us to assign it a drive letter and make it available to the operating system. So this is a pretty simple concept. Uh, we're going to take most of the defaults here. And we want to pick a simple um, um, layout of the drives. It's going to be striped across those uh, physical disks. That way we get a lot of nice capacity and we get some, some nice speed. I'm going to use fixed. And we can specify a size here or we can just go ahead and say we want to use the whole thing. And then we just hit create. And Windows Server is going to do the work for us there. It's all completed. And go ahead and close out of that wizard. And here we're going to sign our drive letter, format it. Again, taking all the defaults here. Remember, there's going to be a C and a D drive already, so we're going to make this our F drive, or we could pick a different letter if we'd like. 
begin in TFS and we're gonna go ahead and create that and we're all good there and you can see everything's looking good we have our virtual disk and just another way of looking at it here in the uh, server manager now we want to go ahead and enable the Hyper-V um, role on this server and we're going to do that with PowerShell hopefully you're a little familiar with PowerShell there's other ways to do this but if not I suggest that you kind of go ahead and jump in this be a good place to start uh, pretty simple uh, command to get this going uh, related to Hyper-V So we'll throw in our command here, and what this is going to do is install the Hyper-E role, and it's going to restart our uh, our uh, host here. Go ahead and run that, and it'll do a few things here, and it'll progress an actual star Hyper-V, and it will um, restart the virtual machine. And as you can see, the machine's now restarted, and we can look at our local server but you can see we now have the Hyper-V uh, role in server manager and at this point we have Hyper-V nested within a host that is a virtual machine running under Hyper-V in Azure and a copy of our ISO and then we want to find the um, Hyper-V Manager. It's going to be under Windows Administration Tools. Again, you may be familiar with this. If not, I always like to show folks uh, how to find things. And we can see our Hyper-V Manager is a new item here. I like to pin it to the taskbar. But we'll go ahead and do that. And um, then we'll um, start the Hyper-V Manager. And you can see we have Hyper-V Manager. This is now Hyper-V Host. We can look at our Hyper-V Settings. Change that to our Drive that we want to use that we created for our virtual machines, our F drive I'm going to do the same thing for our virtual machine section again this isn't necessary for you just to test this out but if you're going to actually do it and run these things this is a best practice we can check these other settings here. There's also some networking that would need to be set up. I'm not going to show that today. Mainly today we're focused on the actual creation of the virtual machine. Now we're going to go ahead just like we would normal with Hyper-V. We're going to create a new virtual machine. Probably pretty familiar with this wizard. We're going to give our virtual machine that's nested in this Hyper-V a name. And we can choose to store it somewhere else, but we're going to go ahead and use our location that we changed. That's why we did that work. We can go Gen 1 or Gen 2. For this exercise, I'm going to use the Gen 1 machine. I'm going to change the memory here to give it a little bit more memory. I'm not going to use dynamic for this example, but you can. Again, all the features are available there to you. And you notice the network's not set up yet. So if you set your network, you'd want to choose that. Our drive size. I'm going to change that and make it smaller because again this is just a demo then we're going to install from that ISO that I copied earlier and this is just how I like to do it I keep my ISOs there where the machines are in an ISO directory you can do this the way you like and we're going to hit finish and again hopefully this looks all real familiar with you if you're experienced with Hyper-V we're going to go ahead and start that VM that we've created and you can see again that we're starting our OS and we're going to start the uh, installation and there we go there's our, we I did Windows Server uh, 2012 R2 you could do that 2008 um, you could do 2016 
Again, just to show normal setup stuff, we can go core, we can go GUI. In this case, I'm going to go with the GUI. Accept the license agreement. And we're going to go ahead and pick our job we want to install to. Again, sorry if you found this boring, but it's going to go through the normal installation routine. It's, when it's done, boom, I'll just log in here to show you the miracle of a virtual machine running on top of a virtual machine and nested virtualization within uh, Hyper-V running in Azure. So thanks again for viewing this. You can see it there. Um, hopefully uh, you can you had enjoyed this video and we'll have plenty more to come for you. Thanks.